fight. So the division's really on fire right now, and we're going to get a chance to see Bungu do his well, thing. Well, there you see the numbers on the two fighters will be coming into the ring uh, in 29 years of age by Shapers. Uh, 21, 6, and 2, 15, 7, and 4 on the other side for Mercado. We'll take a look at the other numbers that uh, these two fighters will be possessing here. That, of course, is the age, also the height and the reach for both. Uh, Sheepers at 5'9", likewise for a Mercado, and you see the weights, 139 for Sheepers, 63.0, 62.35, that equates to about 137 and a half for a Mercado. And the reach advantage slightly in favor of Nas. So we'll find out if some of those numbers will equate to something that they'll be able to take advantage with here. Again, in a 10 round, Ladies general and welcome back fight. to the carousel tonight. Boxing brought to you compliments of Jumbo Cash and Carry, the big one on Super Sport, your channel of champions. Our next bout is in the junior welterweight division. 10 rounds of boxing to follow. Please welcome our boxer into the ring. His name is Renel Mercado. Mercado stepping in, 15, 7, and 4. Independence this evening, all the way from South Africa, Nuts Skipper. Smith and Joe Horn, our timekeeper Danny Litchfield and our referee Len Hunt also like to welcome all the viewers tonight on the Cedric Kushner Sports Network. Well there's 10 rounds of boxing to follow in the junior welterweight division. He's fighting out of the blue corner all the way from the Khao Tang. He weighed in at 63 kilograms. He's wearing the white trunks. Ladies and gentlemen, 29 fights, 21 wins, 4 by knockout, 6 losses and 2 draws. Please welcome Nuts Skippers. His opponent this evening, he weighed in at 62.35 kilograms. He's wearing the blue trunks. He's had 14 fights, 10 wins and 4 losses. Please welcome Ranel the Tiger Mercado. Okay, the third man of the ring will be Len Hunt. He, of course, summoning the two fighters to the center of the ring. Skipper's on one side and Mercado on the other. Both rather reluctant to get to the center of the ring. Okay, let's go, please. If this was the illustrious Mills Lane, he'd be over <laughs> slapping him around, getting him into the center of the ring, I think. Okay, Jeff, please have a good fight. Now, why I'd would like you say that about hands. Mills? Because he is the judge, and when he steps in, he is in control. He, capital T, capital J. <laughs> Mercado again getting his last section instructions as he leans out of the uh, corner. And on the other side, Skippers gets ready to go, and we'll find out what happens as they're scheduled for 10. Now you're looking at a southpaw here. And is Mikado, of course, has he fought some southpaws? We obviously look at the record, do not discern left or right handers, so we're not sure about his full record, having 15, 7, and 4, but little adjustment fighting a southpaw. <laughs> that is an understatement. Fighting a left hander, as we well know, one of the most difficult things to do for a fighter. There's not a lot of them. You don't get a lot of work in the gyms against left handers. You get good sparring, you got to go out and find them. It presents a lot of problems, not the least of which is footwork, as feet frequently get tangled. And everything is coming from the opposite direction. It's always that situation they've heard of try to be explained. You got to get your left foot outside of their right foot, et cetera, et cetera, to try to neutralize that. But try to say that to someone when all of a sudden they're watching punches coming from a total different direction. 
And you see how cautious Mercado is in the first round here. You know, they actually list these two fighters at identical heights at 5'9". 1.79 meters, but uh, Mercado clearly is the shorter of the two fighters right now. Somebody better have their tape measure checked because there's no way Mercado is as tall as uh, Skippers. I'm wondering when Mercado's going to throw a punch here. There's the left hand. He can't get past that jab here. Keep him up. And when you've got a guy that's that rangy as Skippers is and has a good right hand, falls up with the left. Mercado, a shorter fighter, shorter arms. He's got to find a way to get in on that inside. And right now he looks puzzled. And that's being polite. He also, as a matter of fact, on his outside of his left eye already is showing the effects of a rather crisp jab. And Skippers is throwing in his face. Well, one effective punch, of course, and there he threw it, is the lead right hand against the southpaw. But you also have to be able to jab some. You don't want to totally abandon the jab. There goes the Let's right hand up. again. Come on, break team. No, cut out the elbow. And Mercado's not jabbing at all. I don't think he's thrown one this round. That's not going to work in his favor. Skippers has 11 knockouts in his 21 wins, the last one coming in May of this year. He did Danny Reyes in a four-round TKO. But again, 11 knockouts again for Nas Skipper. Mercado has been fighting in the Philippines and in Australia exclusively. Big left hand by Skippers. Mercado having to fight through it at the end of the round. Well, it's one thing about Skippers is the fact that uh, excellent balance. You see that he's able to throw the left, the right. He stays on balance, able to make a lateral move and set up another punch. Excellent balance for this fighter. He's a very obviously capable boxer. And Marcado sits down. He turned pro just in 1996, I believe. So he's still learning the game, and it is really showing. You know, when you take a look at some of the replay here, turning pro in 96 and already a 15, 7, and 4 record, you talk about a guy that has a, a lot of experience. And he ran right into that left uppercut. Very calm corner, as you expect from Harold Volbrick early on. He will get in his face if something's going wrong earlier. And, of course, carries on into the latter part of the round. Round number two of a scheduled 10 rounder on the Cedric Kushner Sports Network. John Saraceno of the USA Today joining me, Sam Smith, for our broadcast today. Glad you could join us. These are junior welterweights. Nas Skipper in the white. In the blue is Renel Mercada. And Mercada is going to have to find some way to get inside on Nas, but he's not going to do it with those winging shots he's well, trying to throw. You saw him lunging in there desperately trying to land something. This is the worst kind of a fight style-wise that Mercado could have even imagined. They're a little bit off balance, got hit with a right hand Stop. by Stop. Skippers. Stop. Oh, don't pull him in, huh? And a warning by Len Hunt, stop pulling in. Skippers grabbing uh, Mercado from behind the neck. But really, style-wise, Sam, this is a horrible fight. This is a nightmare Next. for a guy like Mercado. Short guy trying to box a long, lean left-hander. He doesn't have a lot of power, but knows how to put his punches together. And you just see Mercado. He's got no clue as to how to get inside. He needs to step around to the right and throw that right hand. Skippers continuing to circle well. He's had seven knockouts in his last 12 fights, by the way. So seven of 11 have come in the last dozen. So he's apparently picking up some pretty good power along the way. Another thing Mercado would benefit from doing is, even though the upper torso of Skippers is moving, the head, the arms, the waist, you go for the body a little bit more. And that's a target that you should be able to find. And Mercado just standing right in harm's way. He's right in the zone. He's getting hit and not throwing much back, at least effectively. Now he's picked up the pace here a little bit at the end of the second round but still not in an effective fashion 
course, you have to have an effective aggressiveness to score well with officials, effective punching, ring generalship, and you got to have good defense. Those are basically the four criteria that judges look for when scoring a fight. And right now, <laughs> Skippers in the white has all of the above, and the man in the blue, Makata, has little, if any, of those at all at this moment in this fight. Half a minute to go in round number two. We talked about adjustments after the first round. Now adjustments after the second round. Makata will definitely have to make some, but he's not going to be allowed to do so, and Skipper's doing so well. You know, and Mercado's legs do not look like they're right? under him. He's been very unsteady when he gets hit. One rule that is in effect in South Africa for us tonight, and you will not see it in this round, but maybe in the subsequent rounds coming up, is that it is a three knockdown rule. We've already seen it used here tonight. And you have a feeling that could happen in this one. Well, certainly the way it's opened up here in the first two rounds, okay, Skipper's is right. teeing off of Mercado. There we go to Skipper's corner. Harold Bolbrecht, who once fought Mark Breland for the WBA welterweight title and lost. <laughs> Which we can tell you what they're saying, but my goodness. <laughs> now, Harold is German. Is that German? <laughs> no, I, I don't, I'd say I don't even bring it up, right? I heard some clicks along the way. I sure did. <laughs> look, how, look how well Skippers straight, uses that left hand. He's just straight, sharp with it. Straight left hand right on the button, followed up with the, with the right. And you see the stumbling Mercado off balance. There's some conversation going on in this corner. About that cut. And Mercado, it has been asked if he wants to continue, and of course, if they will allow him to do so with the cut. And apparently, everybody says yes on all of those accounts, and here we go for round three. You saw Mercado making the sign of the cross, yes. and for good reason. <laughs> well, a youngster fights out of Australia coming in, trying to make a fight of it here in the third. You watch your head, huh? Well, Mercado realizes he's way behind on points. The referee is already thinking about maybe stopping this fight. He's got to try and make it look good here in the third round if he wants to continue. Did he come here to win, or was he just here as a, as a survivor or just a body to put in front of skippers? We're going to find out here in the next couple of rounds if it lasts that long. Comes a point here, John, in the fact that when you've got a fighter in such control of a fight, your corner's not going to tell you, let's go out and get some work. Do what you can do if the fight ends, it ends. But you still have to stay inside your game plan. Don't just all of a sudden start throwing caution to the wind and do what, what you really would like to do. And maybe that oh, is to wing some punches. But just stay in your game plan and fight as if you are in your office. Very good point. And I keep seeing Mercado's legs. He keeps making funny movements. He picks them up one at a time. And just little things that tells me maybe he's not in the best shape he could be in. He's definitely back on his heels, that's for sure. Look how calm and relaxed Skippers is. I mean, this is like a gym workout for him. Exactly. The only thing different from uh, throwing some punches at a bag, the bag seems to be moving a little bit right now. Also, you, you know, Skippers could get lulled into a sense of complacency here, and that's one like of the problems with when you're teeing off on a guy that really physically doesn't match up well with you or style-wise, is that Skippers kind of falls to sleep here and, you know, he's pity-patting him with these jabs, but, you know, there comes a point where his corner is going to want him to try to finish this kid off if he can. And now the warning from referee Lynn Hunt, you fight or it's all over. Well, <laughs> you know, it's easy for Lynn Hunt to say, uh, I think Mercado's trying to do something, but when you're having a jab smashed in your face and you can't get into the guy, it's pretty hard. I wouldn't say he's not trying. I, I think Len Hunt is missing the, the mark there. I really do. And also you consider, you mentioned the jab, but right behind the jab is a combination about four other punches. As I mean, Skippers continues to work very right there. Perfect I mean, example. He can't just walk into everything, and that's precisely what he's been doing. He's trying to pick his spots where he can land something, but Mercado just does not have the power on, break it up. where he's going to summon that one lightning punch and suddenly turn the fight around. At least it does, so far it doesn't appear that way. You know, it almost looked like Skippers looked over to the corner to Harold Warbrook and says, you know, what how, am I, how much longer do I, what's happening What here? am I supposed to do yeah. with this guy? 
Well, he'll find out as he'll head for the next round after another solid round and in command of this one tonight. 30 tactic there by Skippers. He's a little frustrated too, Sam. Now, yeah, and that, that yeah. comes a point. When you have a fighter that has a real good game plan and is a skilled boxer as we have here, all of a sudden you come out, you're fighting a man that is lesser talent than you, and it's obvious that's happening. As the rules, of course, three knockdown rule is in effect uh, on the referee's discretion, of course. No standing eight count. If a fighter gets in trouble, he's on his own. Cannot be saved by the bell and any round. It. Only the referee can stop the fight, but as it is around the world, the doctor can uh, give his opinion to the referee, but he has to make the decision to go on or not. So those are some of the rules, but back to the point we were making there about the fighter frustration sets into the better of the fighters as well because he's done everything he needed, but you know, how much further do I take this thing? That's exactly right, and with Mercado, he's only been stopped one time, so he is a survivor, and apparently he's willing to take the punishment. This is round four on the Cedric Kushner Sports Network. Sam Smith along with John Saraceno of the USA Today. Oh, and a right hand, hand by Mercado. One. Oh, what a big punch that was. Mercado's been waiting to do that all fight long, and so have we to see it. And he put uh, Skipper's down. And now what does it do to the fight here? Now what does go through Skipper's head? I don't know, but I didn't think he had it in him. A blast. And Skipper's is in trouble, Sam. He is trying to dance away and clear his foggy mind at this point. And you see Mercado trying to pour it on. He realizes he's way behind in this fight. This is going to be his best chance to win the fight. You know, that could have not have happened at a better time than when we were talking in between rounds, talking about the focus and the concentration of Skippers in a rather easy fight as it was up to that point. He just lost focus and concentration and Mercado made him pay. He fell asleep at the wheel and he crashed into that wall. Go ahead. Stunning reversal here in the fourth round with Mercado uncorking that right hand and dumping Skippers to the canvas after Skippers had controlled, totally dominated the first three rounds. I tell you what, Mercado, this definitely is a solid round for him. As Skippers just trying to regain his composure. He was in total command through three very solid rounds and halfway through the fourth, he is definitely losing this one badly after being down once. But the good thing for Skippers is he's regained his, let's say, consciousness. I mean, certainly he was conscious when it <laughs> happened, but he was fogged up, and now you can see he's got his feet back under him. And what a lift that was for Mikado as well. You said early rounds kind of as if his legs weren't there. All of a sudden he's got a little bit of a lift in his oh. step again here after getting that knocked down. Does he ever? Now, does he go back into his shell? It appears that he's trying to do a little of that. He might have punched himself out of uh, energy here as now a warning comes from the referee on Skipper for holding behind the head. Now, that's three times Len Hunt has warned Skippers for that. When's he going to take a point? And you think about a knockdown uh, wow. round and a he point taken away. Now, Skipper's really teeing off. And all of a sudden, Mercado has just gone into the shell and not fighting again. Well, you're right, Sam. He used that burst of energy early here in the fourth round when he registered that knockdown. And now you just see Skippers peppering him once hand, again. Huh? This time, Len Hunt warning Mercado not to lead with his head. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that would be a good idea. Don't lead with your That's head. That's true. Helps you from getting punched. You can see Mercado just walking in but not doing I'd, anything. I'd like to see Skippers throw that uppercut as he did earlier in the fight with the left hand because the way Mercado leans down, he's a perfect target for it coming in. But he really hasn't thrown it that much. And that was a good round for Mercado, obviously with the knockdown, but Skippers really kind of came back strong the last two thirds of the round. This should be an interesting corner. Watching this would be good. In essence, Harold Bobrick talking about the angles, and look at that shot that Mercado got on him. I mean, that was a big, big shot for the youngster that hadn't right. muscled that much punch throughout the first three rounds. Came right over the left hand, and Mercado was going to jump on him, but he was on his <laughs> back, and you see Skippers 
That left hand, he left it low, Sam, and right over the top of it came the right. Mercado off the school early as Ronell getting ready to come out to answer the bell for round five. He had the knockdown of Skippers and the White in the fourth round. And he loaded up early, got the big knockdown, and then went back into the shell as Skippers regained his composure. And again, Harold Bulbrick talking about angles somewhat and just going ahead and staying out in front and throwing some punches. Get busy again, in essence. Well, Mercado just has the bullseye painted on his puss. And I tell you what, Skippers can't miss it. He is peppering him with that jab, combination right. punching, in total domination of the fight with the exception of one right hand when Skippers fell asleep there in that fourth round. Another thing that Skippers has not forgotten about is doing some pretty good body work. He's head hunting quite a bit more than his body, but you can see him hook the left and the right to the body occasionally just to... Right. Try to drop the gloves a little more. And you see the effects of the combination punching now in Mercado's face as his swelling continues to increase around the eyes and the jaw. He can't miss with that jab. Mercado's got to learn to get his hands up and keep them up. Counter right hand by Mercado. Caught. Skipper's right flush in the face. Almost caught him on the way out that time was the only thing that yeah. saved him on that one, I think. Another right hand by Mercado. And that, of course, is the most effective punch you're gonna find right. when you so fight a left-hander right. to throw that right hand. Right. Skippers can't get sloppy. He's gotta remember to keep those hands up when, when he punches. You can bet between rounds also in addition to Trying to encourage him being busy is to not lose your focus again, as that's what happened to him in the fourth, and Mercado puts him down. Now Skipper's very much back in control of the fight again in round five. And it's easy to see how Skipper's really lost a little focus there. I mean, when you're just tattooing a guy and your opponent's offering very little resistance or offense, uh, you know, you're going to make a mistake like that. Right. And he pulled, once again, Skipper's pulling Mercado down from behind the neck for about the eighth or ninth time. You know, John, looking at Mercado and that great shot we had for you there, I mean, he looks totally exhausted. I mean, he looks like he has just absolutely well, spun every bit of energy he has right now. He has just been eating leather from the opening bell, and that has not stopped. You see little pity pad punches there from Skeppers. Piling up points. I wouldn't be surprised if Hunt doesn't come in and warn Mercado again, either the fighter is going to stop it as you see Skipper's really teeing off on him. That left hand behind that jab. Closing seconds of round five as we're halfway through this scheduled 10 rounder. Well, from the seat of his pants to a solid fifth round, it was Skipper's coming back as Nas performed well. And again, I would assume if the key word was busy and put some punches that that was the answering call and he did just that in the fifth round against Mercado. And you notice the Glenn Hunt, the referee, looking at Mercado near the end of that round. Uh, he's going to be watching closely to make sure the fighter does not take the punishment that he really needs to take at this point. Yeah, an interesting part of the corner is the fact that Lynn Hutt, the referee, had leaned in at the start of the third round. It was almost to see if the fighter, Mercado, wanted to continue. He did through the third and then, of course, the fourth round as he throws another big right hand. Once again, that counter shot. Skipper's leaving himself wide open. Carousel Hotel and Casino here in South Africa, the side of tonight's fight. As they answer the bell, and they are not going to, as that's going to be it. So Mercado is going to stop on the stool, and Skippers will be declared the winner here. So there was the conversation that was going on, and again, it had started before the start of the third round, or maybe at the end of the third, but nonetheless, there was conversation going on almost endlessly in that quarter. And finally now, as they get ready to start the sixth round, this one has been officially called at a TKO win for Skippers, who was the only man down in this fight tonight, interesting enough, but gets a very solid win out of it. If he had continued to fight on Mercado, it's unlikely he would have been able over the next five rounds to really turn the tide, but he surprised us, Sam, with that right hand. We didn't think he necessarily had the power, 
and certainly he was not in the fight at any other time. Well, you could probably count the big punches by Mercado on one hand, and of course one of them was a knockdown punch. Let's get the official time. Errol Bulbrook talking to his fighter. And you know, one of the things they'll talk more about than anything is, yes, you did win. Yes, you did this, that, and the other. But what about the Ladies round? and gentlemen, our fighter does not come out of the corner for a cut eye. A winner by technical knockout, Nas Skippers. So Nas Skippers gets it. It turned out it was the cut they were looking at, but probably a little more than that as well as the referee uh, 